Okay, so this is Temple Oreiki, the SWA uh, youth representative at the World Water Forum in Dakar. And I'm with uh, an amazing researcher here at the World Water Forum, um, Sarah Young. And um, I will be discussing with Sarah to get a feel of um, what her experience at the forum has been so far. And um, also get to know um, what she feels about uh, um, the way the uh, the World Water Forum has been um, organized. So, um, Sarah, can we get to know you? Yes, hi, good afternoon. So I'm a professor of anthropology and global health at a university called Northwestern University that's in Chicago, in the middle of the United States. We have a lot of lakes there, so we cool. think about water a lot. Um, I didn't have a lot of expectations coming to this meeting because it's my first World Water Forum. I'm something of a child in the perspective of my career on water security. I only started studying it maybe eight, eight years ago. So I'm, I'm learning. Um, I was really excited because the World Water Forum invited me to come to talk about the work we've been doing on quantifying experiences with water insecurity, the wise scales. So I was very flattered that someone noticed the hard work yeah. <laughs> we've been doing, and I was glad to be what's called, I think it's called labellisé, like labeled or highlighted by this forum. Um, so when I got here though, I was not happy to be standing in the sun for three hours trying to get a badge, <laughs> trying to get into the opening ceremony, not being able to get into it because I didn't have a badge. There were some logistics that, if, I mean, you're asking me, so yeah. I'm not trying to be critical, but that needs to be improved. Um, but the great things have been how my eyes have been opened to so many aspects of water that as an academic, I mean, we don't do much. We just measure much. <laughs> we measure a lot of things. We analyze data, but I'm surrounded by people who are doing things like you, Temple. I mean, you're <laughs> making things happen. There are, there's, oh, but it's true. I mean, there are so many um, brilliant engineers and inventors and politicians who are doing things. And that's really exciting and energizing to me. Awesome, awesome. So um, basically, um, you've um, shared them. Um, this is your experience at the forum and um, your expectations. Yeah. Now let's talk about the young people. Um, do you think, what do you see in terms of involving young people at the forum, do you see anything of such? Well, they're my favorite people here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the the um, I guess what I see a lot of is a lot of people who have been saying the same thing for some decades, and I think I, I think of the youth presence here as a catalyst for change awesome. and a catalyst for doing things differently. And you know, one example of where I think, well, maybe this just makes me sound old, <laughs> but like social media could be so much more powerful in for, for water security and for the WASH community more broadly, water resource management. I mean, I think there's more power there that isn't being harnessed by some people. And so I'm so glad when these new technologies become mainstream because of you. <laughs> yep. And and um, I'm also glad for the urgency that the youth, the youth. I mean, what do we define as youth? My last name is Young, so I could be. <laughs> yes. <laughs> maybe I'm also <laughs> a youth. But I think that there's um, an urgency that is new to some of these issues that that I appreciate you for bringing. Yeah, awesome. Okay, so um, let's 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 look at the. Uh, I know your your research um, talks about mm -hmm. um, 
measuring um, data on water mm -hmm. security. Mm -hmm. And um, that um, links us to the uh, aspect of um, uh, climate change and um, its impact on water resources. Mm -hmm. um, do you think um, enough has been done in terms of linking water and climate change, especially when it comes to advocacy mm -hmm. campaigns? Um, so you have quite a lot of advocacy campaign going on and addressing the climate change issues. Um, do you think um, enough has also been done in terms of uh, linking climate change mm -hmm. issues to water issues? Simply, no. Absolutely not. It's it's true. If, I mean, if I think everyone agrees, is that water insecurity is climate change made manifest. But the problem is, is that we haven't been measuring water security in a way that lets us know who exactly is being left behind. So we measure water at the, at the basin level, or we look at water infrastructure, but without knowing who individually is being left behind, we don't have a complete picture. So I'm, I'm glad that there is starting to be data put behind this question of who is water insecure. And then the next step is to connect it to these climate changes, these changes in patterns of precipitation, changes in, in temperature. Um, and I think we've been a little bit late to the game. We collectively, and me specifically, I mean, I told you I'm young in my, um, yep. <laughs> well, I yep. am young, yep. but I'm early in my like thinking on water and security. I'm still learning a lot, but definitely next for me, the next chapter I want to open in this book of water, my book of water is the difference to connect the dots between the flooding that's happening mm -hmm. and then, you know, sewage leaking into, into our water supply, awesome. water quality. So, yeah. Okay, that's um, that's um, quite um, an interesting um, thing to know that you want to look into this aspect of um, connecting the dots uh, in terms of your research. Um, so um, finally, let me get your feel on what you think about um, funding research around um, water security. Um, do you, um, what do you think a forum like this can do in terms of improving or maybe if it is not yet improved already yeah um how can funding for research in um water sector be improved hmm well this is probably not going to make me very popular i see a lot of big words and a lot of pretty pictures here mm -hmm. at this meeting yeah i see a lot of fancy stuff being brought in <clears throat> and I'm not sure that this is the best use of our resources. I mean, I'm, I'm happy for this meeting and it's really truly a privilege to be here, but I wonder if we shouldn't be more clearly articulating what the goals are. So when we say water security for all, what does that mean? Water security is a term like food security that can be used to, quote, cover all manner of sins. Water security can mean water availability, it can mean water quality, mm -hmm. it can mean infrastructure. So I think we need to agree on what exactly our target is and then focus all our resources in moving in that direction. And, and you know, it's, it's not cheap to change systems, but the investment is, you know, undoubtedly worth it. And so if I could say water, how, how should we be doing water funding differently? I think we should be identifying very clearly what our goal is and then measuring progress towards that. And funding should be contingent. Funding should be contingent on moving the needle towards that. We need accountability. We can't just say we're we're gonna make people more water secure. Can I please have a million euro? Like, <laughs> like, okay, sure. I would take. I would say that. I would gladly take a million euro. But you should be holding my my fingers to the fire to say like, are people becoming more water secure? However, it is that it's defined. Mm -hmm. 
definition. And my definition is, are more people having access and use reliably for all household needs? Well, I'm glad you mentioned that accountability. And um, that aspect of accountability, um, who do you think the onus is on to drive the <coughs> Well, I think if you're giving money, then you become the one who's accountable. Mm -hmm. And I think if you are giving money, you should be checking to see what you're in investing in. Good. It's 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 a two-way street. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, um, Sarah. I think um, you've, uh, even though you said they're a child in <laughs> coming into the world as a firm, I'm sure you're living as um, an adult. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a teenager. A teenager. <laughs> Like a, or a tween, even like in between a child and a teenager. Oh, okay. tween. that means you need more. You need more. Yeah. More of this for them to. Yeah, although I have a tween at home, and she's a complete pain sometimes. <laughs> so I don't know if I would agree with myself. All right, thank you very much. Uh, yeah. yeah, it was nice talking to you. Did I give you the kind of information you needed? So in the United States, at holiday parties when lots of family are coming over and there's not quite enough room at the table as, because more people are there. You have like the adult table and you have the kid table mm -hmm. and the kid table is kind of off to the side yeah. and they have like the, the not so good silverware yeah. <laughs> and the like okay dishes and they're kind of just over to themselves while the adults are having the like the good gossip and the the nice cutlery and the crystal or whatever you know the fancy glasses and it seems a little bit like that here where we have the air conditioning <laughs> and the red carpet is over here and then the youth the youth area it's not even that well labeled it's, yeah you you really need to work to find it to find it and I think if we if we want to say that the youth should play a central role, we need to place them centrally. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you for making that very valid point. <laughs> the kid table. <laughs>